Hello and welcome to our Irish Folklore and History presentation. To start, we will be talking about the first uh, and most important Irish mythology, Tierna Og. Tierna Og is an old Irish folk tale based around a place known as the land of the youth. And before Christian Irish times, it was all preserved as old Celtic mythology or Irish literature. Some manuscripts haven't, however, survived the age. Currently, one of the most famous pieces is Tierna Og. The inhabitants of Tierna Og are the Tua de Denon, the gods of the pre-Christian island. And it tells a story about two lovers, one human named Oshin and a woman from the land of the youth or other world named Neve. So what happens in Tierna Og is that Oshin ends up falling in love with Neve and he stays in the land of the youth too long. Being a human, he ends up going back to the real world and ends up being extremely old and is blind as a result of staying in the land of youth for too long. Tierna Og has very many popular adaptations in modern Irish culture as well as pop culture all over the world. So the Vikings. For three centuries, 800 AD to 1169 AD, there was a period in Ireland called the Viking Invasions. Vikings established ports in Wexford, Dublin, Waterford, Cork and Limerick, which then became the first large town in Ireland. At that point, Ireland consisted of semi-independent tours or kingdoms. So after the Viking Invasions, um, led to a period of British rule and um, conquer. So the British period of Ireland. From the late 1600s to the early 1900s, there was a period categorised as the British rule of Ireland. This happened after Oliver Cromwell invaded Ireland and took over all of it and established various plantations. So following this, in the early 1900s, there was something called the Easter Rising, when the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, set out to cause a rebellion and free themselves of British rule. This happened in Dublin and was successful. Years leading on from that, the Irish then proclaimed full independence from Her Majesty's crown and were crowned or a sovereign nation. A Octiroin Argus Akoiza. Prince Philip and I are delighted to be here and to experience at first hand Ireland's world famous hospitality. Together, we have much to celebrate. The ties between our people, the shared values, and the economic, business, and cultural links that make us so much more than just neighbors, that make us firm friends and equal partners. Madam President, speaking here in Dublin Castle, it is impossible to ignore the weight of history as it was yesterday when you and I laid wreaths at the Garden of Remembrance. Indeed, so much of this visit reminds us of the complexity of our history, its many layers and traditions, but also the importance of forbearance and conciliation, of being able to bow to the past, but not be bound by it. Of course, the relationship has not always been straightforward, nor has the record over the centuries been entirely benign. It is a sad and regrettable reality that through the history our islands have experienced more than their fair share of heartache, turbulence and loss. These events have touched us all 
many of us personally, and are a painful legacy. We can never forget those who have died or been injured and their families. To all those who have suffered as a consequence of our troubled past, I extend my sincere thoughts and deep sympathy. With the benefit of historical hindsight, we can all see things which we would wish had been done differently, or not at all. But it is also true that no one who looked to the future over the past centuries could have imagined the strength of the bonds that are now in place between the governments